song was written by Ira F. Stanhill, an American evangelist. And it was written during a very difficult time in Ira's life. The central idea of this song is that we can never know what tomorrow holds. Only God is in control. And if you know this song, you can join me as I sing.
When we think of the names of great women in the Bible, the name Abigail does not even cross our mind. But there is a great deal to learn from these great women, from this remarkable woman. The story of Abigail is a brief intermission of the larger story of the conflict between uh, King Saul and David. This story occurs in an episode that is filled with tragic emotions such as ungratefulness, arrogance, hate, bitterness, anger, and foolish words. Let us, let us take a brief look at the historical setting of this story. Now, the 25th chapter of 1 Samuel tells us that the Israelites were grieving. They were mourning the loss of a great man of God, the prophet Samuel. Who, all, who had also been, Samuel had also been the mentor and spiritual advisor of David. These two men shared an intimate relationship. Particularly during the time David was running for his life uh, uh, from King Saul, who wanted to kill him. After the death of Samuel, David and his men took refuge in the wilderness of Paran in southern part of Judea. During this time, David came to know that a rich man by the name Nabal was also in the vicinity for sheep sharing festival and at one point of time David and his men had protected Nabal's shepherds and flocks from robbers so in good faith uh, David sent some of his men to Nabal some of his men to Nabal with a humble request for food in exchange for the protection they had provided Since it was a time of festivity, it was reasonable for David to expect Nabal to help. This was the customary practice and was understood by all. But instead of repaying the kindness he had received, Nabal refused to help and even insulted David's men. And this was a public humiliation. And it greatly enraged uh, David. Therefore, David and his men were on their way to destroy Nabal and every male member he had. One of the wise servants of Nabal saw the humiliation done to David by his master Nabal and alerted Abigail, Nabal's wife, of the whole situation. Here is where the real story of Abigail begins. Although the story of Abigail is very brief, it has many lessons for us. In this text, Abigail is portrayed as a woman with, with many good qualities. As I read this story, I find seven interesting qualities of Abigail. And I want to share a few simple thoughts on the qualities of Abigail based on 1 Samuel chapter 25. I believe we will greatly benefit as we ponder upon the qualities of Abigail tonight. Now, the qualities of Abigail can be mentioned as follows. Point number one. Point number one. She was honest. She was, I'm sorry, she was good and honest woman. She was good and honest woman. Now, the Bible does not tell us why a good and honest woman like Abigail married an evil man like Nabal. It does not tell us why a beautiful woman like Abigail ended up with such a good for nothing man like Nabal. Nabal was wicked, vindictive, foolish, dishonest, ill tempered and a drunkard. Even the name Nabal means fool or stupid. In all probability, Abigail's marriage with Nabal was not of her choice, but the product of the oriental customs 
forcing a woman to marry whomever her father chose. Abigail was altogether different from her husband. She was completely different from her husband, Nahal. She was everything her husband was not. Her husband, Nabal, was nasty and ruthless, but she was kind and gracious. He was evil, but she was good. He was dishonest, but she was honest. In Abigail, we see the physical beauty enhanced with goodness and grace. Verses 24 and 32 also indicate that Abigail was respectful and a blessing to all, a blessing to everyone she came in contact with. Point number, point number two, she was a courageous woman. She was a courageous woman. She could have allowed the fear of her husband or the fear of her circumstances to paralyze her. She could have remained silent and patient but she did not. She did not. She was a woman of great courage. She had the courage to look beyond her circumstances and do what was needed to save her household. She was prepared to go to any extent to save her household from, blood, from bloodshed and violence. She did not think of herself she was even prepared to die for others. And when she went to David, she had no idea how David would respond in his anger. David could have killed her right on the spot. Abigail knew the risk she was taking, but she did what was needed to save her husband and to save the lives of her household. If she had not, if Abigail had not intervened Courageously, if she had instead taken a basic stance in this potentially disastrous situation, there would have been much bloodshed in her household. But she courageously intervened to save the life of her husband and to save the lives of her entire household from bloodshed and violence. Point number three. Point number three. She was a faithful woman. She was a faithful woman. She was faithful. Abigail was faithful to her husband in spite of his wickedness, dishonesty, and ill temper. In all probability, she had a difficult marriage with her difficult husband. Now, it must have been so distressing, so difficult for a sensible woman like Abigail to be sensible in the face of such a wicked husband like Nabal. She could have complained. She could have detested her husband. Or she could have even left her husband for good. But she did not. She remained faithful to her husband, patiently tolerating the abuse from her wicked husband. Although her husband was not worth loving, he lo she loved him. Although he was not worth protecting, she protected him. And when her husband Nabal was on the verge of being killed by David and his men, she pleaded for his life and saved his life. That is faithfulness. Point number four. She was a wise woman. Abigail was a wise woman. Unlike her foolish husband, Abigail had this had wisdom and discernment. She had wisdom and discernment. Verse 3 tells us that she was, a, she was a woman of good understanding. In other words, she was a woman of great wisdom. She was the source, the source of reason and wisdom in her household on whom everyone could rely, on whom everyone could depend. When the when the servant told her of the entire story, of uh, when, she, when she heard from the servant of the entire story about how David and his men had protected them, and how his master Nabal insulted David's men, 
she understood the gravity of the situation therefore she acted with urgency she knew that trying to reason with her with her foolish husband would be totally unproductive it would be totally a waste of time she also realized that she and her entire household were faced with potentially disastrous consequences because of the foolish action of her husband she did not wait around she did not wait around to get her husband's permission to take precautionary measure because this was a life this was life and death situation instead she immediately gathered provisions for david and his men and then she was right away on her way to make a direct appeal to david in person through her sensible and prudent action she could save her entire household from bloodshed and violence point number five she was a humble woman she was a humble woman abigail was a humble woman although she was a rich woman she remained humble she approached david with humility now we are told in verse 23 that she humbled herself before david instead of taking commands of the conversation she sought permission from david to speak being a rich and influential woman she could have been arrogant when confronting david but she did not but instead she fell on her face she met her appeal to david in utmost humility she did not come to david as a superior or even as an equal she came to david as his humble servant humility characterized her entire conversation with david now being a rich and influential woman she could have been arrogant she could have taken and she could have taken an arrogant attitude toward david what would have resulted had she confronted david with bitter allegations that would have that would have been disastrous but instead she humbled herself before david it was through it was through her humility and gracious words she could save her household from destruction that was coming their way her humility even silenced david and completely changed david's response to the situation and in the end david even apologized to abigail and thanked her for her words that restrained him from bitterness and from killing many innocent people in his anger point number six she was a peacemaker she was a peacemaker to prevent the tragedy which her foolish husband had brought on their entire household she stepped out in faith to make peace with david and to offer a delicious meal armed with only words and food she faced an entire army of 400 men just imagine we are told in verse 24 that she acted as the peacekeeper to preserve the lives of her entire household from the destruction that was coming your way. What a classic example of the love of enemies in action. What a shining example. Her mission as a peacekeeper was successful. She not only made peace with David, but ended up feasting David and his men instead of becoming a helpless and tragic victim of their violence. Dear friends, Abigail shows us the value of making a humble appeal when we are confronted by our adversaries, when we are confronted by our enemies. Abigail's intervention between David and her husband provides us a powerful lesson on how Christians are to conduct themselves in order in order to bring peace and harmony into this world Abigail serves as a challenge to us to be peacemakers 
Yes, friends. God is calling you and I to be like Abigail in the sense of being a peacemaker in our society today. Point number seven and the last point. The last point. She was a godly woman. Abigail was a godly woman. Now, Abigail is portrayed as a, god, as a godly woman in this text. If you read this text, you can, I mean, you will, be able, you will be able to figure out. So she is uh, portrayed as a godly woman in this text. She is depicted as a woman who had great faith in God in verses 26 and 27 respectively. Her faith in God was very practical in her life. In her conversation with David, we see a paradigm shift. She goes beyond a wife interceding for her interceding for her husband and her entire household. She suddenly becomes a messenger of God. A much larger picture comes to light as she shares an understanding of God's purpose and future status of David. Most of her words are focused on God. She understood how David was called by God to be the future king of Israel and how his intended bloodshed would trouble, would trouble his heart and scar his legacy. In her conversation with David, she spoke words of some wisdom. She did not promote her own agenda. No. Instead, she was decisively fixed on God's purpose. And she entrusted all things to God. Of all the people mentioned here in this story, Abigail is the only one. She was the only one who saw things from God's perspective. She also urged David to forgive her husband Nabal and to leave revenge, to leave vengeance in the hands of God. Her words of sound wisdom impressed David so much so that it made it virtually impossible for David to take his revenge on Nabal. In response to the sound wisdom Abigail communicated, David accepted her apology and took the provisions she had brought. Realizing the truth in her words, David thanked God and even praised Abigail for steering him away from bloodshed and violence. Then David gave her a verbal assurance, a verbal assurance and commitment that he would retreat with his army and that she could go home in peace. So, Abigail returned home peacefully. And when she narrated to Nabal, her husband, all that had transpired between her and David, her husband's heart, Nabal's heart, became like a stone. This could mean he had a heart attack or a stroke. And 10 days later, Nabal, the husband of Abigail, died when God struck him. At the end of the story, we are told that God promoted Abigail from the wife of a fool to the wife of the future king of Israel by virtue of her faith and obedience in God. Dear friends, we have many lessons to learn from the classic example of Abigail. Her goodness, her goodness and honest, her goodness and honesty is a model for us. Her courage is a model for us. Her faithfulness is a model for us. Her wisdom and prudence is a model for us. Her humility is a model for us. Her endeavor in peacemaking is a model for us. And her practical faith in God is a great model for us. The story of Abigail challenges us to choose differently. To be honest. To be courageous. To be faithful. To be wise to be humble, to be peacemaker, and to trust in, to put our trust in God, no matter what challenges we face in our day-to-day -day lives. Her story also challenges, uh, the story of Abigail also challenges us that choosing humility and wisdom allows God to shape our character and circumstances. And it makes room for God to be glorified 
in our character and circumstances. Dear friends, God is calling you and I to be Abigail in a church and society today so that we can be channel of blessing to the people. Are we willing to follow the example of Abigail in carrying out the will of God? May the good Lord enable each one of us to practically follow the classic example of Abigail in our everyday lives so that God's glory will be manifested through our lives. May God's name be glorified through the sharing and hearing of His holy word. God bless.